if I interview you uh -huh. and ask you some questions? All right. So this is the first one. Can you uh, introduce yourself and then say how old you are? <clears throat> I'm Father Pitts. My age is 103. All right. Well, I'm from Indiana, Benton County, Indiana, and I was born at home as far as I know. I was born at home and baptized the day after my birth. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> Do you know who the, who the priest was who baptized you? I'm not sure. I think it was Father Delagrange. I think his name was Father Delagrange. Um, there were two priests at the, at the parish that time. I think it was Father Delagrange that baptized me. Well, I'm one of one of eleven. There's seven boys in the, in the, in the family and four girls. I'm one of eleven. And, and, and even though my oldest, the oldest was Florence. She married a man in the na name of Edward Cooley. The next one's Ray. The next one is jo uh, Wilford. Then Marie. Marie married a. a Undertaker by the name of John Yule. Then after Marie was seal, Cecilia, we call her Seal, she married Arthur Brost. Then after Seal was Catherine, she married Delbert Clemmy. And after uh, Catherine was my brother Ed, Ed. Edmund, Edmund was the full name. Edmund was full name. And then I, then I came next then. Okay. And after me was my brother George, and then after George was Donald, and after Donald was Alban, and Al was the youngest in the family. That's a lot of siblings. Yeah, yeah <laughs> 11 children, 11 children. Seven, seven boys and four girls, seven boys and four girls. And then is, is one brother still alive? Yes, the youngest brother is still alive. He's the only one of the families still alive, he and myself. And he's 97? 1925, born 1925, so be 97. Yeah, yeah. He was born 1925, October 1925. Yes, we had a car. In fact, had two cars, I think, at times, at times. There were 11, 11 in the <laughs> family, and so, yeah, we had a family, had a car, had a family car. Well, when I was younger, we had a, a I call it a refrigerator, but it wasn't an electric refrigerator. It was, a, you put ice in it, mm -hmm. put ice in it, keep it cold. That was the only, th wasn't, uh, Electric refrigerator was an electric refrigerator. You call it an ice box? Yes, ice box. Ice, mm -hmm. yeah, ice box. Yeah. And then um, I remember you telling me you, you put things down the well to keep them cold. You put things in a well? Oh, yeah, I had a deep well. Put things in there to keep cool, like cold, uh, milk, uh, butter, anything like keep cool, 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 cool. It was keep cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd go down to the ground, would pull me up with a rope. Well, not until later on, I don't know, I don't know when, when it was. My younger years, we didn't have electricity, we had lamps, you know, with kerosene lamps and things like that. I don't know just how old I'd been. I suppose if I was in high school, I think we got electricity, uh, but uh, not in my early years. We had lamps, just had kerosene lamps, you know, things yeah. like that. Yes, we had a, a, a phone at the house. Yes, we had a phone at the house. On the wall, and uh, you ring 
a number of times, I don't know just how it was, but to get a person had different numbers mm -hmm. uh, that you'd ring, ring around. Uh, so we did have, we had a phone in the house. Well, played uh, baseball. I know in the summertime a lot. Go out and hit, hit the ball and played, and, uh, and had a pasture there. Where, and we played out in the pasture in the, in the grass, you know, mm -hmm. with the baseball, playing, hit the ball. So a bit baseball mainly. And had uh, in the winter time we had a basketball fixed in the in the barn. We throw in the barn, uh, so especially baseball and basketball. We also had a a tennis court on the on the farm okay. there, on the place. Had a tennis court. Yeah, played a lot of tennis too. Played a lot of tennis. Uh, yeah. Well, I can remember making my first Holy Communion, uh, and ordinarily everyone had some chores to do, including myself. But I remember that day when I made first communion, I didn't have to do chores. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I, I remember making first communion, kneeling at the communion, had a communion railing, mm -hmm. and my mother and father was on each side of me, dad on one side, mother on the other side. I was in the middle between them, made my first holy communion that way. And what was the, what was the family parish? St. Mary's Dunnington, St. Mary's Church Dunnington, Dunnington. We only lived one mile from the church. <laughs> wow. And do you remember who the pastor was when uh, you received First Communion? Uh, I think that had been Father Beagle. There were two priests, at Father Beagle, he was followed by Father R. Peters. Uh, Father Beagle had been the priest when I was made First Communion. Yeah, he'd been the first, he'd been the one then. Yeah, Father, Father Peter Beagle, Father Peter Beagle. Well, of course, I was young. I was a young boy then, and uh, so I wasn't too involved. I mean, I wasn't aware of things too much, but my dad was aware. Of it. My mm. dad, he said, he was worried about keeping food on the table for the family during the depression. So, but of course, I was a boy growing up, and I didn't wasn't influenced. Didn't affect me too much. I wasn't aware of too much of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I would say in general, it was simpler then, not so complex. Complex. What uh, a more simple life than now. I'd say. Well, my dad's a farmer, and my mother's a housewife, and my mother had 11 children, so you know, <laughs> she was just busy. Yeah. She was busy. And she not only helped in the house, but she even helped outside. I remember she even helped husking corn in the field. And, and uh, besides all her work in the, in the house. So, and of course, my dad was, uh, head of the farm, he was always busy with farm work. My, my mother busy in the house, and even the time she worked outside, she helped out in, in the garden, for example, and even in, in the field, even in the field, she helped sometimes, like husking corn. She helped us corn. Did all the, all the kids have to go out and help too? Did all the kids go out and help as well? Well, everyone helped, yeah. Everyone helped according to their age, you know, according to their age. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Well, 
Well, uh, whatever my parents ask us to do, whatever my dad asked us to do, of course we had a lot of cows, you know, how to milk cows, and there were a lot of jobs on the farm, cutting grass and, and helping with the farm work. So there are a lot of different times, kinds of work on the farm to weed the fields, weed the garden. Uh, I know we went down the corn rows of the hoe to cut out the weeds in the corn. So whatever it happened to be. Mm -hmm. Did you have two chicken coops, you said? I had chickens, yeah. yeah. I had two chicken bins uh, and uh, a lot of chickens, a lot of chickens. And uh, my mother was more or less in charge of those. Uh, and uh, would cat hatch the eggs, you know, hatch chickens from the eggs, you know, keep them in the basement of the house uh, when they're firm, when they're becoming chickens. And uh, and had two chicken pants, two chicken bar, two chicken uh, uh, not barns but uh, buildings mm -hmm. uh, for the chickens. I had a lot of chickens. Did you ever uh, help with the cultivator in the field? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had uh, uh, cultivators for the corn, you know, and uh, some cultivators were for one row of corn, and some were for two rows of corn. But I usually had what the one for one row of corn, more simple. And two horse, two horses would pull that plow. And there's a seat on the on the plow for the person who was driving the horses mm -hmm. to sit, so they could ride. Uh, uh, and then, of course, when it came to harvesting time, like the oats, when that was uh, ready for cutting, we had to shock the oats in uh, in the little bundles, about about nine bundles in a. In a in a pile, and that was quite a job to chuck those co those uh, those oats bundles. Bundles about so big, nine of them in a bu in a bundle, and put nine in a in a shock together. And that way they would stay there for a while, and then come uh, 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 time to thresh them. Th threshing, then the uh, farmers would get together and uh, help each other f thresh their fields. Uh, maybe eight or nine, six, seven, eight, nine families would go in a group and have one threshing uh, machine, one threshing for f machine for that that group, which was driven by a steam engine. Had a steam engine. Mm -hmm. They. The steam was created by burning coal, by burning coal, and that was a, a big, a big art, a big machine, big item. Item, and then the the threshing machine is a big item too, and the the steam engine would pull the threshing machine around, and then when they got to a place to slash the, the oats. They, they would uh, put a belt from the machine to the from the steam steam engine to the the threshing machine. A big belt which ran the threshing machine and threshed the oats out of the out of the straw. So uh, and a group of farmers would get together maybe. Eight or nine mm -hmm. for a group. To work. They work together, help each other do their their fields, their their oats mm -hmm. together. When when you were a kid to uh, to heat the house during winter, um, did you have a, a coal room and then a, a corn husk room too? Like when when you were younger in the in the house, did you have a coal room 
To keep the house warm? Oh yeah. Yeah. Had a yeah, there was a cold room. Had a cold, one cold room and another room for cobs. They burned cobs also from the corn. That was uh, not a good uh, fuel, but it, it was good though. But the coal was better, you know, it, that would burn more mm -hmm. longer. But had, we had two rooms, one for cobs and one for coal, down by the furnace. That was in the basement of the house. It was in the basement of the house. One room was over there for cobs and one another room for coal. And the first is over here. And uh, they put both the cobs and coal in the furnace. Did, did you have enough bedrooms in the house with that many siblings? Did you have enough bedrooms in the house with that oh, many siblings? Well, I had uh, two bedrooms for boys and one bedroom for girls. The four girls, they were in one bedroom and then the, the boys were in the, the other two, two rooms, the two rooms for boys, uh, and then one for my parents. Uh, so there are three, three bedrooms upstairs, and there's one bedroom downstairs for visitors, you know, vis and visitors that come. And, uh, uh, that wasn't used only in time of visitors. I don't think he's otherwise. Uh, if it's, we use the upstairs for bedrooms. Uh, there are three bedrooms, one for the girls and, and two two for the boys and then one for my parents. Four four room bedrooms upstairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you did you learn to play any instruments? Did you learn to play any instruments? Finance? No, uh, to play any instruments, to play music. Oh, 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 no. I I did a little with a guitar, but what, I never felt through with it. One of my brothers went through and became pretty good with it, with a guitar. And my older brother, the oldest brother, he played the coronet. He played the coronet okay. and would uh, play for dances, you know, with other, with, with, with other band, with a band, my oldest brother, and one of my sisters was pretty, pretty good at you know, the piano, the piano, uh, she's pretty good at it. Uh, but then we had a piano that that uh, played rolls. Mm -hmm. You had, had one of those, you put a roll on and, and play the roll, but, but it also had keys, had, you had keys. Uh, and one of my sisters pretty good at that. Uh, well, we had a Catholic school in our parish. Okay. And we all went to the Catholic school. And uh, of course, Mass, you know, took us to Mass on Sunday. And we prayed in the home too especially during Lent, you know, to pray the rosary. And uh, so they saw, we saw, the, received the sacraments, you know, go to the confession frequently. Uh, and, then, and as I say, we had the Catholic school and they sent, we sent us to the Catholic school eight years. In fact, you had high school for a while, and uh, but that didn't continue long, long, not always. But the grade school continued quite a while. So by their example and their ascending us to a Catholic school, try to, you know, give us a Catholic faith, present, Preserve the Catholic faith. Did you have uh, teachers who were nuns? Yes. When I was in school, just had nuns for teachers, no lay people, all all nuns. They were sisters of Saint sisters of Saint Francis from Lafayette, and uh, each sister had eight grades, and each sister had two grades. 
first and second grade with one teacher, third and fourth grade another teacher, and so forth. Um, four teachers. And they used to have one sister who was uh, the housekeeper, like prepare the meals for the sister, other sisters to keep the house. Mm -hmm. uh, there were sisters of St. Francis, sisters of St. Francis from Lafayette, from Lafayette. Uh, do you remember any of the sisters' names? Yes, uh, Sister Remberta was one. Uh, I think, I think, I think she might have been the sister that was, when, when, when I received my first Holy Communion. Uh, Sister Rika Berta was one. I know which, Sister Rika Berta might have been the one that taught me when I first moved, first met on my first Holy Communion. I don't know for sure. I used to have a holy picture with her, <laughs> her name on it. I forget though. Uh, I had sisters for teachers. No lay pe no lay teachers. Uh, no lay people teaching. All sisters. Uh, uh, Well, I remember too, Father Beagle was the name of the first, when I was youngest, Father Peter Beagle. Remember, I think, I think about the fourth grade, he left the parish and, and re replaced by Father Otto Peters. And Father Otto Peters was there, I think about 16 years, I think about 16 years. He was a priest when I became a priest, when I be, was a danger priest. Mm -hmm. He was still a priest there. He was still the, the pastor, still the pastor then, yeah. So those two two priests, Father Beagle and Father Peters, were the two ones that, uh, that I knew as pastors. Every Sunday, would you altar serve? Oh, we had a lot of servers, had quite a few servers, you know, took turns. So when our turn came up, the sisters, I think the sisters usually point at those. I'm not sure how that worked, but I think the sisters had charge of the servers more or less, and uh, would appoint who would be server. And even during the week, you know, the priest had mass every day. Uh, the priest would have a mass, have a server for mass uh, during the week also. Uh, even though, though there wasn't any school, of course, school days are certainly had servers then. Of course, uh, the, the students went to mass first in the morning. That's the first thing they did was to attend mass every day. Every day, every day, yeah, every day. Uh, and I was about I was on eight o'clock when the mass was. And that starts a day after mass, and they go to the schoolroom to for for teaching for learning. Uh, well, the first year of high school, I was still in the Catholic school, but then that the, the high school at the parish was eliminated. So then I went to a public high school for three years, uh, for three years. First year was at uh, the Catholic school. And I don't think it was a, I think, I think it's just a, the one year. And then the last three years were in a public high school. It was Amy, Amy was us, uh, the, the school name of the school, and it was the name of the town, called Amy High School, uh, for three years in the public high school. Then I went to St. Joseph's College in, in college here in Rensselaer mm -hmm. for, for two years. Then I went to seminary for six years, became a priest, and, uh, well, When I was a younger boy, I, I sometimes thought of being a priest, but 
I kind of put it out of my mind. I said, that's too much for me. I can't do that. But then after I was in high school, one of my classmates uh, decided to become, to study for the priesthood. I think that uh, uh, stirred up in me a little bit interest in it. Anyway, in the, when I was a senior in high school, I decided to study for the priesthood. And um, I remember telling my mother what my desire was, and she was very pleased with it pleased with it, but, and I, so I started studying for the priesthood, but my dad also, also said, and he often told me that several times, said, now Richard, if you uh, don't want to become a priest, don't do it for us, not your, it's, it's your decision, you know, not do it for us, and he told me that several times during my years of study. So, was there a vocations director, or how did you, how did the process start? Well, I think it's, it started when I told my mother I, I, I want to be a priest. And uh, then I, I don't know just how it went from there, but I remember my parents, mother and father, mother and dad, and, and the pastor and myself, the four of us, went to St. Joseph's College to uh, arrange to enter the college there as a student. I remember them taking me there and uh, helping me get s start, you know. Uh, so, but uh, when I was a boy, I thought, of, Priest at times, but I thought no, uh, that's not too much. Um, <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, uh, later on, as in high school, I said, well, that I have to do something. I have to do something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, I decided on the priesthood. I. Uh, my mother was the first one I told it to. I told her, and she was pleased, of course. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so it started from there. So I went to, at that time, St. Joseph's College in, in Rensselaer, they took priesthood students. Okay. So I went there for t two years as a priesthood student, and uh, everything went all right, you know. And uh, after that, that uh, time for the seminary, so uh, I, the, the, I suppose the bishop was the one that decided that, but anyway, I went to St. Minor Seminary, St. Minor Seminary in Southern Indiana, ben Benedictine priests, you know, mm -hmm. teach there, and that's their project, and I went there then for, for six years two years of philosophy and four years of theology. And then I was ordained. Uh, at at St. Joseph's, what did you learn in those two years? Was it Latin? And Well, I had a little, I had a little Greek, uh, or another, well, other uh, subjects were, uh, algebra or something like that, mathematics, some mathematics, and uh, uh, I think grammar, English, that that line, I'm not sure about history, I, I don't remember about history, uh, but uh, I had Latin, I had Latin there and Greek, those two languages, Latin and Greek, because I remember the professor said, during, during the summer, study too on, I don't know, I think it's Greek or Latin, which was, he said, no, don't forget to study that in the summer. <laughs> but uh, in the summer, working in the fields in the daytime, 
the heat, you know, and being tired at night, it was very difficult <laughs> to <stay> at night. <laughs> I don't know how much, I don't know how much sitting I did, but he told us so to study even in the summertime. Uh, at St. Joseph's, was that the first time you had electricity? Uh, well, I, I don't know just when we got electricity at home. Um, um, I think I might have been in high school when they took electric lines in the country. See, we were on the farm. Mm -hmm. I was on the farm. I think it's... I was in high school and they brought electricity to our house. Uh, I'm not just sure when that was, but we we got it though. Eventually, we got it. What did your siblings think of when you went to the, the seminary? Well, I think they approved. Uh, approved. In fact, one of my brothers also was thinking about the priesthood, and uh, I think he was priest. Well, he went, he went to St. Joseph's College also, uh, I think for one year, and uh, but then he uh, decided not to continue his study for the priesthood. So really, I was the only one in our family, but one of my nephews became a priest, one of my nephews became a priest, Father Richard Cooley, I don't know if you ever heard of him. I don't think so. Uh, but Father Richard Cooley? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a nephew of my my sister Florence that is his her son, her son. Florence was the oldest in our family. And Richard was her son. Uh was he a priest for our diocese? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was a priest for our diocese. He taught it uh at the high school there in Lafayette for a while. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. With, I was on the faculty. I think he taught English, I think it was. There's no place for a priest to live out there on the high school grounds, at the south part of the grounds. Uh, at Central Catholic? Yeah, at Central Catholic, yes. Yeah, he taught there at Central Catholic. Uh, I think he taught English. I think. Uh, at at Saint Joseph's, was there a, a teacher who spoke in Latin, like fluently in Latin? Was there a teacher who spoke in Latin, like fluently? Oh, at Saint Joseph's, I don't think they any taught taught in Latin, but at the seminary, the professor of uh, of uh, logic, uh, philosophy, he he spoke in Latin. <laughs> he spoke in Latin, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but that was the only one. Uh, there was one of them taught some Hebrew, but <laughs> it was always Hebrew to me. <laughs> 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 but they, they taught it Hebrew, but not not, not much. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but the one professor always spoke in Latin. Uh, one of, uh, taught philosophy. He taught, spoke in Latin at, uh, to, as a teacher. Uh, Could you understand him? Well, yes. What helped though, in college, at St. Joseph's College, we had uh, what we call logic, has study and logic. And that helped me because what was taught at the seminary in philosophy spent, uh, was based on that a lot. So I had some basis for it. It mm -hmm. helped me to understand a little bit of, of what was said. But, uh, but yeah, the, uh, 
fun teachers always spoke in Latin, <laughs> and our exams were in Latin too. They have maybe two or three professors up there and asking you questions, and the student went in one by one. He was put before those professors and asking questions, you know, and then the student was supposed to answer. Uh, and those were in Latin, as far as I, I can remember. Always, I think it was always in Latin. Uh, We, we kind of already talked about this, but um, you could talk about Father Moeller. You, you grew up with Father Moeller, right? You knew him your whole life? Yes. Uh, well, as I say, except the first year, the very first year, I think Father Moeller went to a, a, a country school where his, where his aunt, I think it was, aunt taught. So excepting for that one year, all of our years in school were with Father Muller as a classmate. We were the same class. I've been from second grade on to eighth high school, was the same high school, same college, same seminary, all together as a classmate. So that had been many years. And, uh, well, anyway, uh, he, he, he was intending to study for the priesthood before, before I uh, had decided. But his going, I think, influenced me to think about it, to think about it. I think that had some, some uh, influence on me to encourage me to do it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, whatever else, Move me. One day I told my mother then what I intended. She was glad and, and we started taking steps and to get in, to go to St. Joseph's College. I went to St. Joseph's College first two years. They took priesthood students for those days. Okay. And, yeah. and after that, I went to St. Myron in southern Indiana, mm -hmm. the Benedictines, for six years there. Uh, which I, I, when I, when I went to St. Mary, to the seminary, I was wondering what it was going to be like, you know, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I liked it, well, I liked it fine, you know, uh, classes and we had recreation, had sports, you know, play ball and everything, and, and uh, I liked it, it was, it was why, so I, continued and became a priest. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were confirmed, um, do you remember which bishop it was that confirmed you? Yes. It's Bishop No. Bishop No. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He was a bishop of Fort Wayne. That time we were going to Fort Wayne Diocese. And uh, I remember him coming to our parish, St. Mary's Dunnington, for that confirmation. I think I've been in about the, about the fourth grade, I think, at that time. I remember when he came uh, for confirmation. Uh, yeah. Uh, he was a very active bishop. He was very kind of a prominent bishop, Bishop Noel. I, I, he's the one like that started the Our Sunday Visitor. It's a Catholic moment, mm -hmm. called the Catholic moment. Yeah. He's one really stars that. Okay. Uh, it was in, in that line he promoted um, the paper, and uh, I think he wrote wrote too, but uh, he promoted uh, the the press. He promoted the press. Uh, he was he was a com he was kind of a prominent bishop really. He, I think he promoted a lot the uh, the um, basilica of the Immaculate Conception in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. I think he promoted a lot that had a lot to do with that too. Okay, promoting that. He was 
had quite a, a, a influ, influential bishop, uh, Bishop No, John No. Who's your confirmation saint? Huh? Who's your confirmation saint? Con oh, oh, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, my name is Richard William Pitts. I think I took Barfus. I'm if I took him for my confirmation name. I, I really don't know. Uh, if I had, if I took any more, I can't remember. I took, I, I think Boniface, when I was in the seminary, we had an opportunity to become what they call Oblates mm -hmm. of St. Margaret. And I think I took Boniface then. But um, at confirmation, I don't remember any name I, I took for confirmation specifically. I, my, my middle name is William, Richard William. And as far as I know, I just kept those names. Uh, as far as I know, I, I don't can remember taking any special name. Did you have a confirmation class? And did you have a sponsor? I had a sponsor and I I don't know what uh, preparation we made. I was in Catholic school at that time, mm -hmm. so I presume that we were preferred, uh, pre prepared for uh, confirmation. I remember when Bishop came to confirm us, but uh, I don't just remember what uh, preparation we made. Uh, as I say, I was in school at the time, so I suppose we made some preparation. Uh, sisters were, only sisters taught then, mm -hmm. no, no lay teachers, just yeah. all, all teachers, all sisters, all sisters were the teachers. And so I, I, I don't remember, but, uh, but I presume we were prepared for confirmation. Uh, I think I'd, I probably was about the fourth grade at that time, it was somewhere in there when it was confirmed. Do you remember getting confirmed and how it was the, the traditional rite, so that you got a little slap on the cheek? Do you remember that? What? Well, in the in the traditional confirmation rite, um, the bishop gives you a slap on the cheek. Oh, oh, yes, yeah, 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 yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it didn't, didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, of course. One memory is kind of a sad memory. Uh, we went to school there in the summer, I suppose because of the war, of the war was on that. Uh, anyway, it was in the summer. Ordinarily we went home in the summer for, for vacation, you know, but that summer we was there, we were there. And they have a lake there at St. Margaret, a, a lake, and um, seminaries would, would swim, on, swim in the lake, you know. Mm -hmm. So this Sunday, we went out swimming, uh, as usual, and then one, one seminary, he belonged to a religious order, he didn't re return. And if he, he drowned, he drowned in the seminary. And that put a, uh, what shall I call it, a screen of, of sorrow and reflection on the whole seminary. That, when they found that he was drowned, they, they found him drowned. And he belonged to the order, he belonged to an order. Uh, I think, I think it was a Mar Marianist, brothers, brothers of Mary, I think they called him. I think he was one of them. Uh, and I think his home 
I think his home was in Ohio somewhere. Uh, but, uh, that that put a different spirit on the seminary for a while. That atmosphere, that day, especially that day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, Wilf Win, Winifred or something like that was his name. Winif, Winifred brother, he's a brother. They call him brother, brother. But. Uh, how many different orders went to St. Minerid? Well, of course, the Benedictines who lived there. And there was the Oratorians, uh, um, Oratorians, they call them. Uh, uh, and then uh, Society, Marianus, I, I don't call them Brothers of Mary, how do they call them? It's a Mary, a Mary and his son Mary and his. Uh, uh, of course, the Benedictines, and then there's and the di different dioceses, seminaries from different dioceses, like for, like Fort Wayne. Uh, that's Fort Wayne diocese at that time, and like Indianapolis diocese, mm -hmm. and from Illinois to priests from Illinois diocese. Uh, Kentucky, they were, were there from different dioceses, all, all went there. Uh, maybe not for the whole six years, but maybe for four years possibly, or, or for two years of philosophy. I know so, some of my classmates were from Ohio, and they were there only for two years, two years of philosophy, then they went somewhere else for Theology. I, I don't know where, where they went, but they didn't come to St. Minor day after that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but uh, students from different dioceses came there for studies. Uh, Do you remember who the Arch Abbot was? Yes, Arch Abbot Ignatius Esser. Ignatius Esser. He'd been. He was their abbot for quite a few years, uh, for quite a few years. Um, uh, I think he was there, the abbot, all the while I was, all the while I was at St. Myrid, I think. I think he was the only abbot while I was there. Uh, when I was a priest, my first parish was at Attica. And one day, I got a telephone call. It was Abbot Ignatius. He wanted to come up and review some property that they were thinking about getting mm -hmm. to establish a establish some kind of an institution, a uh, Benedictine institution. He wanted to take a look at it. So he called up and wanted to. You no, know, stay at my stay at the rectory there mm -hmm. one night. So he came and and I, I remember then the, that next day after he had come, went out and walked over around that property to see what it looked like and so forth. He said, "Well, it's, it's all right, but one one thing had has to have someone to buy it." <laughs> 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 and then they didn't buy it. <laughs> they didn't buy it. So they didn't, didn't, didn't buy it. Yeah. Well, I remember, I remember seeing my daughters. Uh, I don't know how many we seized at one time. Was it two or four? I had four minor orders, I think it was. And uh, I don't know if we saw all four at the time or not, but I remember we seeing some of them. I remember that. It was rather simple, it wasn't too complicated. Uh, my, my parents didn't come for it or anything, it wasn't uh, that serious. But was it at the cathedral? No. It's at the Abbey at Church. It's at the Abbey Church. At the Abbey Church. Uh -huh. I said, of course, I was from 
the Fort Wayne Diocese at that time, at the Fort Wayne Diocese. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think all the students received there, even though they were from other dioceses, that they still received them at their St. Minor's. Uh, I, th I don't know if the abbot gave them. I don't think it was the bishop. I suppose that the abbot would have been, been a, a given authority to give them, mm -hmm. uh, I suppose. Anyway, where it was, I remember receiving them. I can remember that. I think there are four, I think there are four minor orders. Well, there's, there's tonsure, and I don't think that's part of the order that's separate made, but there's tonsure, and then there's porter, there's exorcist, lector, and acolyte. Yeah, that was four. Yeah. Do you know what year of seminary it was? Like, how, how far along you were? Was it like your third year? Or was it at the end? Well, it wasn't at the end. It was in the midst of it. Maybe, I would, I'm just guessing, about the third year, I think. About the third year. At the fourth year, or, well, I was there. I was there six years, two years philosophy, four years of, the, of uh, theology, and it was at the third year of theology that I received deacon deaconship. Deacon. I think I made a deacon like in the fall of 1944. I was ordained a priest in 1945, so the, the deacon came maybe three, four, five months before I was ordained a priest. I was I was made a deacon. By by were you made a deacon by Bishop Bennett? Was he bishop yet? No, he wasn't bishop yet. Then yet, no, no, he wasn't bishop then yet. Uh, I suppose it was. Bishop Ritter, he was a bishop of Indianapolis. I think it had been Bishop Ritter. Uh, he came to St. Minor to give orders. But uh, no, Bishop Bennett wasn't, he wasn't a bishop until 1945 uh, in January. January 10th, I think it's, he made a bishop. And I was a, made a deacon in, in uh, 1944 in the, in the Oct I think October, in the fall, October, because a deacon could give Holy Communion. Mm -hmm. And I remember giving Holy Communion to my parents. I don't know if it had been at Christmas time, it might have been at Christmas time when I was home. But anyway, it, was, it struck me so much to give Holy Communion someone special to my parents that when I want to give Holy Communion my am just shaking mm -hmm. just shaking mm -hmm. like that uh, the thought of it the thought of it uh, I remember that I could hardly keep my hands still well we studied a long time in the deacon year, that the last year in the seminary, we sent we deacons called deacons and uh, had a room for ourselves, and in the room we had an altar set up mm -hmm. for practicing mass, and I can remember practicing mass a long time. I don't know how long, how many months, but <clears throat> a long time. Practicing mass, I would say mass. It was perhaps more uh, in, uh, involved. More, uh, for example, many more signs of the cross mm -hmm. at that time. There were many more signs of the cross and saying the mass. I remember saying, practicing a mass for many day, many days, many months, months. I had an altar in our room and uh, go through the actions and prayers, practicing the Mass. 
And of course, it isn't in Latin, it's in Latin too. Uh, but uh, spent much time in, in trying to learn the Mass, trying to learn the Latin Mass, yeah. Do you remember when you first heard that the Lafayette Diocese was going to be created? Do you remember when you heard that? I think the f first word we got of that was in November of 1944, that the diocese was created. That was the first we heard of that. And then, I don't know, just when the word came about, the new bishop, you know, Bishop Bennett, being the new bishop. Mm -hmm. I know just when that was come, if it came at the same time, it might have came at the same time, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, heard that, and of course, I was a deacon, we were, I was a deacon that time in the seminary the last year, and uh, we found out that the new bishop would be from Dunnington, my home parish. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'd be made a bishop in January. So the deacons who were for the Fort Wayne Diocese were allowed to go to his ordination to his may, be made a bishop. Mm -hmm. That was in January of 1945. So there were four of us, Father Muller, Father Lanning, Father Hardebeck, and myself. We all went to Fort Wayne, stayed overnight, and some, some priest put us up, I forget where it was, and uh, went to the ordination of the bishop that next day, Bishop Bennett. I think it was January the 10th, 1945. Mm -hmm. And then January 18th, it came to Lafayette and was installed as the bishop of the new diocese in Lafayette at that time. Mm -hmm. Of course, we were in a seminary. We had to get back to the seminary. Uh, we might, we might back, back to the seminary before that. I'm not sure of that. Did you get there by train? Did, uh, you, did you take the train? I, I think we did. I think we did. I remember I took the train for my first appointment, I remember that distinctly, for my first, first appointment. My first appointment was to St. Lawrence and Nancy as assistant priest. And I was staying at my parents at the time between ordination and the time I went to St. Lawrence. And I remember going on a train to Muncie from my home. Yes, yes, I didn't have a car, I didn't have a car, no car. I went on the train and I didn't have a car for about a year. Uh, when I went home to see my parents, you know, visit my parents, I went on the train and they picked me up, you know, at the depot uh, to come get me to their home. Uh, I didn't have a car until over a year after ordination. I think it was in April of 46, 1946. I had my first car. Uh, of course, then I, then I would drive home, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I remember uh, it began, I was in, at my home. Our, my, our home was one mile west of Dunning, of, St. Mary's Church in Donington. I remember going to Mass at uh, in the chapel, in the chapel in the school. The priest said Mass early in that morning in the chapel. I'm always present, and I know some of my family members, other members of the family were there too. And then later on we went to Lafayette for ordination. The ordination, I think, was I know what hour. I don't think it was too late. Maybe it might have been nine o'clock. Uh, I might have been a little later. I'm not sure. I remember going there, and it was 
rather mild day. It was February the 2nd, <laughs> and it, well, it was rather mild, kind of cloudy, kind of cloudy. But uh, on Sunday, by Sunday, that's on a Friday. That was on a Friday. That was Nation Day. It was on Friday. And uh, by Sunday, it was icy and snow and cold, kind of real winter weather. And that's when we had our first, what we call the first mass. Father Muller, as he was a classmate, mm -hmm. he had his mass at, I think, 9 o'clock in Dunnington there. And I mine was, I think, at 11, I think it was, both of the same day. And then after Mass, I went to the hall for dinner. Uh, but uh, it was quite wintry and, and the roads weren't very good. I know some of the people from Lafayette could not come out because of the roads. It was too, too bad. Uh, but the ordination day, it was rather mild. It's as cloudy, it was, as I remember, but it wasn't too cold. Uh, but two days later, it was quite cold and wintry. Since you were some of, since you were the first priests for a diocese, who was at the ordination? Were there priests from the Fort Wayne diocese too? I don't remember exactly, but but I was told that the church was filled was filled. The church was filled with people. But I don't know where it all came from. But of course, from Dunnington, you know, there have been probably quite a few people because mm -hmm. the two of us from Dunnington, but the church I, I was told was filled for the ordination day. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I think it was in April 1946. I think it was. So Ford, and um, I, I know I think had four cylinders, and the price nine hundred ninety nine dollars and sixty one cents. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, and I had that car for several years. Several years. I think about five five years or something like that, and then I think I got another Ford after that. Uh, well, we went on a boat, on a ship, and we left New York in April of 1950, came back, it was the first part of June, 1950. Both times on a boat, going over was, I forget, that's the name of that boat, I, I can't remember it. Anyway, it was a boat, coming back on another boat too. But going over, it took a week, I guess a week. And coming back, it didn't take quite as long. Uh, I, I think coming back, we came on a French boat, and going over, I think it was an Italian boat. But, um, As a pilgrimage, there were a number of people in the group, you know, and four priests, Monsignor Copano, Father Hardebeck, Father Mahler, and myself. And uh, I think about 30, about around 30 people in the group, in the group I think it was, they're all in the same boat, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we left New York I think it was in, in April, and we came back at first part of June. Over a month, we were over there. Yeah. And the main place was in Rome. I, I think we spent about a, a, a 
good month, I think, in Rome, going around to different churches and uh, the uh, Vatican and uh, seeing the Pope. We saw the Pope only from a distance, never, never mm -hmm. uh, recall a visit with him personally, but uh, it's Pope Pius XII at that time. I remember seeing him. He was carried on one of those, uh, whatever they call it. Oh, the, the Cedia, Cedia Gestatoria? Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. It's called it that. Up there, you see him. Uh, but uh, he was the Pope. And of so I remember when he died, too. He died in. died around 19. Uh, about 59 or something like that, like, when he died. <laughs> anyway, I saw him. I, Saw him from a distance. I didn't see him mm -hmm. personally to greet him, but I saw him on that gestatorial uh, chair. And then you also went to Assisi and Fatima and Lourdes, right? Yes. Yeah, Lourdes, we thought, especially for Lourdes. Fatima, we didn't stay there very long. It was on our way over. We stopped there in the afternoon. And I think the same day, like the same day, we got in the boat and continued on. So it wasn't very long there. But Lures, we were there uh, some time. I don't know just how long. But uh, remember the, the uh, procession they had at night, for example, with those their candles, mm -hmm. lighted candles, procession. And I remember Lures better. And Fatima, uh, I think it, at Fatima, the the church that is now there, I don't think that was there at that time. I think they had the plans for it, but I don't think the church was there yet uh, at that time. The church that is there now, uh, but Lourdes, that was uh, well established. Uh, uh, the church and the grotto, the grotto, and the procession they had at night with lights. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Well, it surprised me because in the earlier years, when I was first a priest, it was something unusual for a priest to leave. Mm -hmm. But when that happened repeatedly, you know, and it was a, that was something different. It wasn't like it always used, well, it used to be. Uh, it used to be, if a priest left, that was something unusual. Yeah. Unusual. But uh, it became somewhat usual in a sense afterwards. Uh, and like some of the, some of the younger priests, I remember that uh, maybe a priest only for a short time, and they left. You know, uh, that was that was something unusual to happen before. So that wouldn't happen before. Uh, so. Uh, does it still does it still feel the same like uh, or have you been able to uh, are you able to enter into prayer more deeply uh, well of course formerly I celebrate mass in Latin yeah now I say it in English perhaps you could say that it seemed like Celebrating Mass formerly was something more sacred than celebrating Mass now. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the language, maybe because of the la Latin. That might have some 
think something to do with it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But uh, we've always tried to say mouse reverently mm -hmm. and prepare for mass, you know, and Thanksgiving after mass, keep a prep, prepare for mass and, and before and after mass. Have you always prayed the same prayers before and after? Well, not the, not the same, not the same, but uh, there are different prayers that they have prepared, you know, before Mass and after Mass. Sometimes they say one, one type of prayer, another time, another time. They, they, but they're all meant to prepare a person for Mass, you know. Mm -hmm. I, He's one of those that mm -hmm. are prepared for mass, one of them. And of course, I was in this small parish at Donington, St. Mary's Parish, Donington, and one of the things that happened on Sunday, Sunday afternoon, was, uh, I don't know what they call it, if they, if they call it anything, had devotion to some kind, I don't know if it was Vespers or what, had some kind of, 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 of devotion Sunday afternoon. And we always went to that. Um, I remember going out and playing ball after dinner, after dinner, going out and playing ball, baseball, whatever it was, and then all at once, Mother or dad would call out time for time for church. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we had got in and went to church for I don't know what kind of devotion was. Uh, I think maybe benediction is part of it. Okay. Uh, Sunday afternoon. That was always Sunday afternoon, uh, as far as I can remember, well, because I remember. It interrupted our ball game, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they don't. I don't think have things like that now. I'm not sure. Uh, Sunday after Sunday vespers, uh, uh, they might have called it Sunday vespers. I don't know, but I I don't think it was uh, the true vespers. Might have been some devotion, you know. Mm -hmm. so I don't know what it was. Did you have any special devotions during Advent or Lent? At home? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Usually, I think, I don't know about both of them, Advent and Lent, but I'm sure in Lent, but it might, so, might also be an Advent too. I think that's when we made an actual effort to say the rosary, the family rosary. Mm -hmm. I'm quite sure there was some time when we went for, for stations. I remember the priest saying at stations, uh, the servers with a cross, a cross leading during during Lent. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose I say the mass, mm -hmm. the mass. Well, to pray and to ask God for his help in discerning and deciding what to do with one's life uh, and, can, and that they should give some concern to the religious life. What do you remember most about your parishes that you were stationed at? As I flip, reflect back, my first par parish as assistant priest, I think of several things, but I can't uh, say of anything s special that stands out. There was, a, there was a school there at that time too, a Catholic school, mm -hmm. and not just nuns were teachers, teachers, all, all teachers were not nuns. Sister St. Agnes from Wisconsin, 
and uh, there were t three priests there, two assistants, and the two assistants took turns saying mass at the convent early in the morning for the sisters, and we, we I think we took turns uh, a week at a time, I think it was, and I remember going over to their first mass at, early in the morning, maybe six o'clock or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, for mass as a as a priest, as a parish priest, as a pastor. I I would say I treasured my first pastorate at St. Francis Adrian Attica as best of all. I felt there I was being a pastor, I went around to the homes, I tried to visit all the homes. Uh, well, of course, the bravery, the office, divine office, the favorite prayer, but, uh, uh, the memoraria, the is a special prayer to our Blessed Mother. Uh, and then, um, which Pope impacted you the most? Oh, um, well, I appreciate Pope Pius XII, but, um, But Pope John the Twenty Third, I had special love for him. I had one of his books called uh, something like a Diary or Journey. His journey. He wrote a book anyway, and at each at the end of each day, he made some reflection, and he wrote that reflection and composed those together as a book. And I always appreciated that book. I forget what it's called. That was Pope John the 23rd. Mm -hmm. But so, uh, but uh, Pope Pius XII was a good Pope. Uh, and Pope, Pope John the 23rd, too, I appreciate. Well, of course, and Pope Benedict XVI, Appreciate him too. Mm -hmm. as a good pope, so it's hard to say. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know which one impacted me the most. Uh, um, I read in one article that uh, you wanted to start the Legion of Mary. Or you, you should have started the Legion of Mary at the parishes, is what you said. Well, of course, the I don't know how it came about, but Bishop asked me to be uh, chaplain. Legion of Mary, uh, so I, no, I did, I became a chaplain, and we met every month, once a month, third, third Sunday of the month, I think it was, and when I got acquainted with the Legion of Mary and what they did and what they should be doing, it occurred to me why didn't I start that in my parishes where I was when I was a priest? But I never thought of, you know. Mm -hmm. But after I saw it and was with them, then I saw what they could do and would do if, according to the, according to Legion of Mary, what they could do. And then I said, well, that's, that would be a worthwhile project. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I just wasn't aware of it, you know, that before that I just didn't think of it, didn't think of it, you know. Mm -hmm. But after he, the bishop asked me to be a chaplain for them, then I met with them and then I saw more what it is, what they did and what they could do. Then I said, well, it's, that had been something I should have done in the parish. It should have been well worthwhile. So, 
Well, I'd say pray and trust in God's mercy. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Father. You're welcome, <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremiah. Can you give me a blessing? Yes. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit, come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeremiah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>